right, welcome back, everybody. Um, this is episode 11, I believe, of our uh, C++ tutorial series. Uh, I hope that you guys have enjoyed it up to this point. This lesson, we are going to be talking about what has to be the most common errors you will ever come across in C++. Now, for and while loops are very, very, very finicky, and they often generate what's called an off by one error. I'm going to show you the way to avoid that. Now, a lot of people, they like to start counting at one, and that's totally fine. But let's say that you wanted to output 10 numbers. Now, if you're counting by one, and you don't want to sit here and go, okay, well, one, it iterates through, it outputs one, so that's, you know, one, and then it increases by one, so now it's two. And you don't want to, you don't want to count it. You don't want to waste your time on anything like that. There's a simple rule of thumb, and that is whenever you're using one and you want to output a certain number of something, you increase that number by one over what you want. Now, the same thing goes with if you want something to be less than or equal to, but you only want to output a certain number of them. Say I want to output 10 numbers, but I start at 1. Then if it's a less than and equal to type of situation, this is only going to output 9 numbers. Um, and you're going to have a lot of off by 1 errors. So... Again, it's it's sort of a, a difficult thing to understand, but the simple logic behind it is whenever you want to use a less than and equal to, you always want to use a 1. Whenever you want to use just a less than and you start at 1, uh, you're just going to increment the number by 1 above what you think you should. Now, that's one of the more common things. Um, another one that you're going to see a lot of, and I'm just going to comment out these three lines. Um, what you'll see a lot of is people leaving out their iterator in a while loop, because a for loop kind of forces you, because typically that, that third slot right there is an iterator. But in a, in a while loop, you don't have that there sort of by default. So what you're going to see here you're going to see that it just runs infinitely and it we get this ugly infinite loop going um, those are bad and typically when you have an infinite loop happening that means that you have missed an iterator somewhere now that's actually not considered a problem with your programming um, there are some loops that will and are supposed to run for the duration of a program all right now I'm going to teach you one more little thing about loops because those are the two biggest problems you're going to run into with loops. Um, what I wanted to show you is a little something that we can do here. And I'm just going to change that to 10 and just change that to a less than sign. Now, what we can do in a program is we can say, uh, we can kind of control the flow of a program now. And this is very useful. We can say, um, enter any key to continue or enter negative 999 to exit. And so what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to, and we're just going to call this, um, let's say int i run. And what i run is going to do is it's going to be used in a while statement of its own. So we're going to say while i run does not equal negative 999, we're going to run that. Um, so that should actually be before this. B 
because if we don't ask them to enter it every time, it's really just not going to work. Okay, and so what we've officially done here is we've kind of contained the entire program into a, you know, kind of self-repeating loop. And I'll show you how this is going to work. We're going to run it. And it's going to say, enter, you know, any key, so I'll hit one. And it's going to do the same thing. Um, actually, just for style's sake, I'm going to put an endl there, and I'm going to recompile, just because I don't like things being on the same line. I'm kind of finicky. Okay, so I'll hit one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll hit two. And again, that's fine. Three, that's fine. Four, you know, whatever. And that's, that's going to do that, you know, kind of every time through. Um, the reason why my while statement isn't running is because, unlike the for statement, every time I go through the for, the one is getting reset, or the i is getting reset to one. In the while statement, it only did that once. So now to exit the, the loop, all I need to do is select here and type negative 999. And there you go. It exits. Well, actually, first it spits out this number right here, and then it exits. Um, if I wanted to make it exit even quicker, what I could do is just type if I run uh, equals negative 999, break. And what break does is if you are inside of a loop, it just skips to the end of the loop. So in this case, it will skip from here down to here. And I'll kind of show you how that works. So my first run through, I'm just going to enter one. And, oh, that one in there. I'm going to enter one, and everything's going to come out kind of how we expect it to. And I'm going to enter negative 999, and it's going to break. No more output is necessary. And so that's going to be the extent of this lesson. Um, in this lesson, we covered break, and I showed you what's actually called a sentinel controlled loop. Um, that basically means that you have one way out of it, and it's usually what's known as a dummy value, or a value that shouldn't come up in the program unless you want it to do it. Um, typically, they signify the end of a file or the end of something. And with that much said, I hope you guys have taken something away from this. If you should need help with anything, comment below. If I'm helping you out, hit subscribe above. Alright, have a good night, you guys.